Hi, my name is Jacob Aluong and I'm a humanitarian aid worker. I help those in need here in my country, South Sudan, and outside South Sudan. That was me heading out for assessment uh, north of Bor in a place called Baidit. Baidit is my home village. That is where I was born and raised. Um, this area was hit uh, heavily by the floods in late 2019. And in January 2020, I took a bike and I headed outside there to see the situation myself and to brainstorm on what to do. I needed a solution. And when I reached the area, my assessment went well and I move, I move around the village and I saw the first hand uh, information where large number of cattle were killed by the floods. They were not even buried or even burned because there were uh, actually many and it was overwhelming for the community to bury them or to burn them. In that assessment, I also had a meeting with community members, the community leaders, the chief and the commissioner of the area. So we passed a resolution that, that we needed a dike to get to the area. So, but to do that, we needed fuel and I reached out to Samaritan Pass to give me fuel to surround this village with a dike. And Samaritan Pass responded positively and gave me 20 barrels of diesel fuel to fuel an earth moving machine to uh, help pile the mud and to put the dike around to shield the community from excessive water. Uh, as you can see, that is excavator is scooping the mud uh, from the water to pile the mud over and to put up a dike to shield a community. This is community uh, a member. He is uh, talking about the ongoing work in the area. He is thanking all of you, those who have contributed this, and the youth also who stood with him. This is another community elder. Uh, he is thanking uh, the hand that gave them fuel. Uh, they used to do it with their bare hands, uh, but this time you, they were bailed out by the fuel that was donated to them by the Samaritan Pass. So he is thanking everyone that was involved in this project. This is another, this is another resident is one of the community members who is also uh, happy for the work that has been uh, done by Samaritan Spurs and those who initiated the project. He's saying they used to do it with their bare hands and now this machine will help them. It will help them. They will not work hard like the, the way they used to work. Uh, equally, the dike that is being built by the machine is a bit stronger than what they used to do with their bare hands. So he's confident that uh, it won't be broken again. So many of them are here. There's another person uh, giving thanks to those who are behind this project. Uh, he's also happy. And he's thanking all of you, those who helped to donate the fuel, and those who also helped them with the machine. This machine is extremely expensive to, to, to hire, but thank God, in collaboration of the community, they were given this machine for free. And the community used the fuel that was donated to them by Samaritan Spurs. So he's back again. He's the man in charge. He's the 
He's the man that I'm walking hand in hand with. He's the one who is stored the fuel. He's uh, in charge of uh, the safety of the area. So he kept fuel and he's also uh, uh, a trusted gentleman in the area. So this is his, his deputy also. Uh, they work hand in hand. They oversee community safety. And community safety includes safety from natural disasters, uh, safety from any uh, assault from the neighboring uh, communities. So they are happy and they are now walking around glad uh, to have seen this project going on. So that was me behind the camera doing the assessment after the completion of the dike. So you can see we have water there on the right hand side. You can also see here on your left hand side, the left hand side is dry and what is keeping water away is that dike. Uh, if this dye wasn't there, the water on the right hand side would have spilled on the left hand side and displaced the community. This is a big achievement and this community has remained behind, you know, in their own village, in a place they call home, a place they dearly love. Um, if this dye was not erected, they would have migrated to the neighboring communities here in Jongula estate or in the neighboring estates like Central Equatorial Estate, where many people from both area have migrated. Uh, the host community in those places are now in conflict. But because these people were protected, they were able to remain behind. So this dike has played a lot of a uh, lot of role in peace building in livelihood as you can see cows are now thriving here they graze in a dry area and then they go back to where they are kept you can also see the aerial view of the dike on the right hand side that is a lot of water if that water was not stopped, um, it would have devastated this area. This area would have been uh, evacuated. So you can see the dike is stretching across. I also move it to the left hand side and you can see the dike. The dike is about uh, one and a half meter wide and two meters high in some places is it's a bit uh, higher um, so you can see um, you can see on the left hand side that is the northern part of the village and what we saw earlier is the western and southern part of the village uh, on the le your left hand side, people used to live there, but they have moved and they are now in this safe zone. We call it safe zone because everyone is here, it's inside there. You can see people on the dike, they climb that dike to go and fish, to go and swim, to go and do anything they want. If they want to cool down from the sand they go and swim uh, you can see we have few water in the dike as you can see but uh, it's just stagnant water that is not much and uh, that's not don't affect them anyway so uh, that is me talking and you can hear I would like to thank Kenny Isaacs and I would like to also thank David Phillip and the entire management team uh, in South Sudan.